Today we're going to talk about hosting and domain names and which website you should use to build your blog and lots of technical bits that are going to seem a little scary. So the first thing I want you to remember is that literally you only have to do this once, right? So one of the things that makes me crazy when I'm doing something is I'm like, gosh, this is so hard to do. But if you know you're only going to do it once, it doesn't matter. Just get it done. Like do whatever you have to do. Watch the YouTube videos, cry, do whatever, but get it set up. So we're going to talk about today different options to start with of things you can do. Now, the first option that you can do is a WordPress.com website. And people always get confused. They want to know the difference between a WordPress.com website and a WordPress.org website. We're going to be talking about WordPress.org in a wee minute, but right now we're going to talk about WordPress.com. The reason why you do not want to have a WordPress.com website is several fold. Number one, it doesn't allow for as much commerce. Like they don't want you to have, um, like it's a free website. It's a nice place. It's for somebody who is wanting to start a blog or a website that is maybe um, like the old fashioned blogs that are journals or something like that. So this would not be a good um, resource for you if you're wanting to make a money making website, which is what we want to do. So we are going to X out of this one. Hey, Sandra. Um, number two is Squarespace. So if you are totally clueless technically and you cannot figure anything out and it would stop you from having a blog if you cannot do the technical parts and you've tried and you've tried and you've tried and it has never worked, start with a Squarespace site because those Squarespace sites are beautiful. They really are beautiful. They're not great at SEO, but they are very good at social media. So you could definitely share this on Pinterest if you like making pictures, if you like doing social media, if Instagram's a favorite, and now you just want a place where you can make a site that you can share a lot and you're not going to be super into the SEO. You don't want to learn how to do SEO and you don't really care that much about it, but you want it to be pretty and shareable then I would use Squarespace. And I am not gonna give you any of my affiliate links for any of these things. This is a um, just a plain old link, squarespace.com, for, uh, for doing this because I think that this is something that's super important for you guys to know. And also to know that I cannot give you help technically on this. I have had my blogs for many, many years and they were made before. Um, a lot of the things were the way they are now. And so I am going to give you help. I have a lady down here. I'm going to give you the exact lady to watch to get help. And it is current and it is perfect. So you will get help. But unfortunately, I always let you know, you can email me with any questions. I'm not going to be great at questions on this. Okay. So WordPress.com? No, just don't do it. Word, uh, Squarespace.com? If you are going to share it mostly on social media and you don't care about SEO as much, you can have ads on squarespace.com. It's just a little bit harder, but I know people in my ad network who are using Squarespace. So yes, you could use a Squarespace site. Now, the last one is wordpress.org. And this really... I understand your confusion if you don't understand when somebody says use wordpress.org to make your site and you show up here and you're like, okay, I'm ready to go. What is it? Well, wordpress.org isn't anything. It's, it's um, like it can't help you very much. It is just the kind of the description of what it is. So don't go to wordpress.org. Okay, it's not going to help you, but we're going to use a WordPress.org site. I know it's the most confusing thing, but I'm sorry. Okay, the very first thing you want to do, and we talked about our niche yesterday. 
So the very first thing you want to do is to get a domain name. This is called the domain name or the URL. So my two domain names are Marketing Artfully and Artsy Fartsy Life, right? Dot com. I suggest you do a dot com name. Um, I know that there's lots of funny ones. Like for my realtor friends, there's dot realtor, there's dot, there's a billion dots, dot, 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 dots, right? Dot technology, dot computer. I like, there's a ton of them. The reason why I wouldn't do any of those, and it doesn't make any difference, like from an SEO perspective, they have said unilaterally, Google has said it doesn't make any difference if you have a biz or an info or whatever. To me, the difference is that human beings understand.com. All human beings understand that websites end in.com. And it was funny, I had a realtor that emailed me. And she was like, will you go to my website? It's, you know, sandyk.realtor. And I'm like, okay, well, what's the, what's the URL of it? And she's like, what's the URL? And I'm like, what's the domain name of it? And she's like, that's the domain. And we like did this whole who's on first, what's on second, because I'm techie, but I did not understand that .realtor was her whole website. I thought there should have been a .com or a .net after that. So even somebody super technical cannot figure that crap out, right? Um, okay, so now you see I'm playing township to get through some of these stressful times. My eggs are ready. All right, so we're gonna, the, the place that we're gonna go look for a domain name is GoDaddy. They're a great domain name register. If you really want to, you can get your hosting through them and kind of keep it all in one place. I had GoDaddy hosting for years. And one of the things I really liked about them was it was relatively affordable and they were relatively helpful with the technical stuff. Um, I'm going to have a better suggestion for you, but you could use GoDaddy if you wanted to. So now let's say we're going to um, start to think of a domain name. What you want to do, and let's say we're going to have an artist site. So you could do your name. Like I have tarajacobson.com register to me so you can always try your name so if i were to do tara jacobson and you want to keep it all together one word tara jacobson com and tara l jacobson right so when i hit dot com and i say go it's going to tell me that Tara Jacobson is taken. I knew that because I own it. But Tara L. Jacobson is available. Okay. So you, oops, so you can use your name. It doesn't mean you shouldn't. Years ago, it used to make a big difference. If you were selling vacuum cleaners and you got vacuumcleaners.com, you would have a better chance of ranking for vacuum cleaners. Now, I do think that there's a value. Obviously, I wanted marketing in my in my website domain name for my marketing site. So then I did a bunch of research and I found Marketing Artfully, which is a really short um, name. I think they say under 13 characters is the best. Um, so what we can do is say we're an artist. So say we're going to do watercolor artwork, right, dot com. Let's try watercolorart.com. Let's try mywatercolors.com. Uh, watercolors for sale. I don't love that one, but fine. Let's. Um, and we haven't run into anything weird yet. Um, so say we were to do water color rating, which doesn't even make sense. I know, but you don't want to have those double weird things and you really want it to kind of be as much as you can, something comprehensible to humans. So something that makes sense, um, that makes sense as a sentence. Okay, so watercolors, because it's a terrible URL. 
Okay, so then we would find out that those do not work, right? And what I do when I do it is I copy and I paste all the ones on a little notepad over here that I've tried because I will try, I will try hundreds of domains to find one. I just got 30dayblog.com. So don't feel like there are no good domains. There are tons of good domains. You just have to be a little creative with it. And this I can help with. I am super good at like I have a um I'm a I'm a domain savant. And so if you have a question, email me, Tara at marketingartfully.com. Tell me kind of what your business is about, and I'll be able to help you find a domain. Um, so, but what you're going to do is you're going to register your domain once you have one. So let's say we did this one. I'm not going to buy it, but you're going to say proceed to checkout. And then you're going to log in. I'm already signed in. And they're going to say, do you want it to be two years or do you want it to be one year? Okay. I would do two years. There's a little bit of value to, um, uh, in SEO to having a longer domain registration, I would not add domain privacy. Now, when you listen to Jennifer and her talk, she says that um, that she does suggest, I believe, domain privacy because then you won't get a whole bunch of weird emails from people. But I also um, take into consideration that for SEO, there is a value to having it not be private. So I always leave mine open and I always suggest other people leave theirs open. I kind of, at this point in, in technology and in blogging, I feel like it's a wash, right? Like, I feel like the little bit of value you would get maybe is offset by the crap with people emailing you. So that is just, I, I think that's a personal opinion, right? All right. And then you would say, add it. And then you're going to own that domain name. Bing, bing, bing. And GoDaddy is going to send you an email that has a lot of gobbledygook in it. Keep that. People will be asking you for parts of that. All right. So if you were to stick with GoDaddy and you were to say, I want to do websites and marketing, um, you know, uh, we don't want a website. We want a WordPress site. But I do know that they have WordPress hosting. You can just ask them about that. But we're going to suggest, um, I'm going to suggest to you through, uh through jennifer that you use siteground now siteground is what's called a a shared hosting and what that is is um like you're on a big server with a lot of different websites and you're not going to be as fast as you could be if you had like better hosting but for the first year for the first you know when you're just getting started you don't need fancy hosting. You need to create content because you're probably going to have at least, say, six months or so before anybody even notices you're doing anything. So during that time, it doesn't matter how fast your site is. And so you need to, so three months start up hosting for 99 cents. And then I think it goes to something very affordable, like $3.99 a month or something like that. So this is the way I would go. And I'm going to... Um, Put a link to this uh, this video, and she has an affiliate link. Jennifer has an affiliate link, which is SiteGround, jennifermaker.com forward slash SiteGround. Now, she literally, see, SiteGround, this is a video that literally walks you through every single step of setting up your website on SiteGround and getting you into your WordPress. Once you're into your WordPress, we're gonna to start tomorrow um, with our next day, but I'm gonna show you how to do things for your website, setting up your contact page, setting up your policies page, setting up your, um, we're gonna be making sure you have Google Analytics and all those kinds of things. But for today, all you need to do is you need to get yourself set up. And for my suggestion, if you're totally technically illiterate, I would get Squarespace. If you can follow what Jennifer says, then I would get SiteGround. Okay, so those are the two. 